Wedges are simple machines which are used to lift heavy loads for a small distance and usually you require lesser force as compared to the load actually lifted. Here in this particular problem a load weighing 160 kilonewton, this is 160 kilonewton block, it is raised by means of two wedges A and B, these two are wedges A and B and these two wedges are symmetrical. Uh, find the value of force P for impending motion of block C upwards. To raise this block C upward in upward direction, we need to determine value of this P. If coefficient of friction is 0 0.25 for all contact surfaces, here given coefficient of friction for all contact surfaces like this B and this horizontal surface, between this B and C, between A and C, A and this horizontal surface, so on. Everywhere coefficient of friction is given 0 0.25. The self weight of the wedges may be neglected. So B as compared to C, we can neglect the weights of A and B. Now angle of wedges are 16 degrees. So angle which is making this angle uh, from horizontal is given 16 degree. Both are of same angle and symmetrical A and B. Same load are uh, required to raise this block C. First of all, you need to uh, draw free body diagram of any of these two wedges. So I, am, I have taken this wedge B. So I have drawn this uh, free body diagram. See that one load is there, which is applied load, external force that you have to apply first. So I have applied this external load first. And uh, this surface is removed. This horizontal surface is removed. So uh, so in place of that I have drawn one normal reaction which is perpendicular to the surface named that normal reaction as N1. Now this, uh, this block is uh, tending to move towards left direction in this direction. Therefore friction force will act opposite to the impending motion that means in this opposite direction. So I have taken this direction, this uh, force. So uh, in the maximum value of friction force is considered here. So all mu's are same. So I have written this mu and uh, normal reaction is N1. So friction force will be mu N1 which will, which will be acting towards right side direction. Similarly, uh, because of C, one load will be applied in B. So no, one normal reaction will appear here which is perpendicular, which is perpendicular to the surface. So I have named this uh, normal reaction as N2. And again friction force since it is moving towards left side so friction force will be opposite to that in this direction at the surface in this direction mu into N2. So all these forces I have shown here now you can bring all these forces in uh, in this XY line. I have drawn reference axis in which you can shift all these forces you can transfer all these forces here in this uh, in this reference axis. So first P acting towards left. Uh, N1 and mu N1, N2 and mu N2. Now you can see that this mu N2, direction of mu N2 is uh, along this uh, surface of the wedge and this surface is making 16 degree from horizontal. So mu N2, angle of mu N2 is 16 degree from horizontal. And since mu N2 and N2 are perpendicular to each other, so if this is angle is 16 degree, so this should also be 16 because this total angle is 90 degree. So this is 16 degree. So angle of N2 from Y axis is also given. Uh, 16 degree. Now we know that in place of two reactions, normal reaction and friction force, we can replace these two forces by a single force, single resultant force, which I explained in my previous video, which makes an angle of phi, which is uh, angle of friction from normal reaction. So if you replace N1 and mu N1, you can replace these two by a single force R1, which make which will make an angle of phi from N1. So what is phi? Phi is angle of friction which can be obtained using this relation where mu is given 0.25. So we know that phi is equal to 10 inverse mu which is coming about 14 degree. So there will be one reaction R1 which will make uh, which will make 14 degree from normal reaction. Similarly in case of N2 and mu N2 also you can draw uh, one Result, uh, one resultant of these two N2 and mu N2 which will make an angle of 14 degree from N2. So this is my N2 from here it will make 14 degree somewhere here. I have drawn this forces here. So again I have drawn reference axis. Now uh, this P is there. P is already there. Now in place of uh, these two forces. So in place of N1 and mu N1 I have drawn one, uh, one, reaction, one resultant of these two N1 and mu N1 which is making 14 degree from the direction of N1 which is y axis. 
So this I have drawn. This is my R1. So I have removed this N1 and mu N1. In place of that, I have drawn only one reaction R1. Similarly, uh, I have removed this N2 and mu N2. So first I have drawn one line which is along this N2. So this is N2 which is making an angle of 16 degree from Y axis. Now another line which is making uh, an angle of 14 degree from N2. From this direction uh, you have to draw R2 which is making 14 degree. So this line is making 14 degree from this line. So total angle from Y axis will be 16 plus 14 that is 30 degree. So in this way you can replace these two, these four forces by these two forces R1 and R2. Now you can apply Lamy's theorem. There are only three forces, P, R1 and R2. So from the Lamy's theorem, P divided by uh, sine of angle between R1 and R2. So this angle you have to take. So this angle is equal to total 180 degree minus 14 degree minus this 14 degree minus 16 degree. So in this way you will get angle. So P divided by sine of this angle. So I have taken this angle as uh, this one. Uh, similarly, you can take this R2 divided by sine of angle between P and R1, see so this total angle, so this is 90 degree plus 14 degrees, so 90, 90 plus 14. Now you require only R2 because this R2 can be uh, calculated by this, uh, uh, by drawing free body diagram of C, so I have taken only R2, I am not determining R1 at, uh, at this present case. So P is equal to, so from these two, you can say that P is equal to R2 sine 136 divided by R104. So you require value of P. So P can be obtained if you know the value of R2. So how can you determine value of R2? For to determine value of R2, you require to draw free body diagram of uh, 160 kilonewton block. This we have already drawn, this already we have obtained. So I have drawn free body diagram of this block C. So first its weight vertical downward direction. So weight of this block is given 160 kilonewton. Now you can draw one reaction R2. Now you can see that uh, R2 is the reaction between B and C. B and C. The reaction between B and C is R2. Now this uh, R2 is acting downward direction on B. In B you can see that this N2 and mu N2. So resultant of these two is R2 which is acting on B. So the force acting on B is towards downward direction in this direction and therefore the re reaction force which will act on C will be just opposite to this direction. So it will act on up upward direction. So it is making 30 degree from Y axis same 30 degree it is also making 30 degree. That means same direction opposite in, uh, in opposite sense it is acting on C. Now similarly, uh, there will there um, you, you will get another reaction between A and C also since uh, direct, uh, this angle of wedge for A and B both are exactly same, uh, friction force also same. Therefore, this reaction, the reaction R3, you can name that reaction as R3. In fact, that R3 will equal to R2 it's only. But uh, if you don't know, uh, at present we don't know whether these two reactions are same. But direction will be same because of the same angle of uh, wedge and same coefficient of friction. So uh, I have drawn another reaction R3 which is making same angle 30 degree and it is acting on this particular surface. Now there are three forces acting. So you can uh, again bring all these forces in XY line. So I have drawn X and Y axis. In that you can uh, bring all these forces. So one is uh, R2 which is acting at 30 degree here. R3 another force the same uh, another force which is making angle 30 degree in this side and another one is weight which is acting vertical downward direction. Now again there are three forces, there are three forces and this body is in equilibrium so you can apply Lamy's theorem. So apply Lamy's theorem. So R2 you require R2 only because here in this case you require R2 to determine value of P. Ultimately you require to calculate P and P can be obtained by calculating R2 only. So I require only R2. So R2 divided by sine of angle between R3 and 160 Newton that means this angle and this angle is equal to total this 180 degree minus 30 degree that is 150. So I have written this 150. Similarly uh, this value is known from this you can calculate. So 160 divided by angle between R2 and R3. So this is 30, this is 30. So total angle is 60 degree. So 160 divided by sin 60. From this you can calculate R2 which is which is coming about 92.4 kilonewton. Now put this value of R2 here. You can put this value of R2 uh, in this equation. From that you can get value of P. 
so value of p can be obtained r2 so in place of r2 i have replaced that r2 by 92.4 and the sin 136 sin 104 that we have already determined in this equation we already obtained uh, uh, already obtained from the free body diagram of this uh, wedge so uh, finally you get this value 65.7 kilonewton so using this uh, applying this load you can uh, just lift this block up in upward direction thank you